you're very lucky in Ireland, you've got a vote in October as to whether or not to endorse the European treaties. All the struggle for freedom and independence from the British Empire was not about Ireland joining in imperial adventures in the future. I do not see how one can effectively marry the traditions of Irish neutrality with the signature for the Lisbon Treaty. And I think that's a message you've got to keep on and on putting over all the time. NATO then developed for itself this role as being the military arm of the European Union. Under the terms of the Lisbon Treaty, Europe will become subservient to the wishes of NATO and the aims of NATO. We are creating for ourselves here one massive great Frankenstein which will damage all of us in the long run. If you succeed in getting a no vote here, that will be such a boost to people like us all over Europe that do not want to live in a European empire of the 21st century. And does he not recognise the great danger to the cause of socialism in this country or any other country of the imposition of a banker's Europe on the people of this, this continent? My concern is that we need to be very robust against the conditions for the single currency. The single currency will lead to enormous cuts in public expenditure in Britain and a very rapid rise in unemployment. Now, he appeared to make some tilt in that direction. The other one is a concern about democracy in Europe. We have a European bureaucracy totally unaccountable to anybody. Powers have gone from national parliaments, they haven't gone to the European Parliament, they've gone to the Commission and to some extent to the Council of Ministers. These are quite serious matters. I wondered if the Prime Minister has yet had a chance to place a call to Alexis Tsipras, the new Prime Minister of Greece, to congratulate him on winning the election, but also to learn from him why the people of Greece have finally said no to the imposition of the most appalling austerity, destruction of their public services, high levels of unemployment and deepening poverty. Will he use his good offices within the European Union to ensure they do get the debt right off they're so desperately seeking in order to restore Greece to the prosperity that it deserves to enjoy? We want to see a more social Europe, a more inclusive Europe, a Europe of workers' protection, a Europe of social protection. Those are the Labour demands. They can obviously only be achieved if you're within the European Union to do so. But your instinct is to battle to stay? My instinct is that because I want to see a Europe that does more for social protection, does do much more for environmental protection, and not simply a Europe of the free market. I wanted to see a more democratic Europe. I wanted to see policy making that was more open. I wanted to see greater similarity of protection laws and regulation on environmental protection and issues like that all across Europe. Should Britain remain part of the European Union or not? That's going to be a decision. The Labour Party has made its position very, very clear on this issue. The vast majority of Labour supporters say the same. The affiliated trade unions in large measure say the same. The Labour Party is going to be committed to campaigning to stay within the European Union. And when there's a Labour government in 2020, we will be trying to ensure better workers' protection across Europe, strong financial protection all across Europe, and a Europe that's based on social justice and good rather than solely on free market economics. You've voted against the EU many times. Before today, you've branded some of its policies crazy and immoral. Would you now actually describe yourself as a pro-European? Yes, I've been critical of many um, things within the European Union. I think you would have probably gathered from my speech I have many criticisms of the European Union. This is a decision about whether we stay in and argue for the kind of socially just Europe that I want, that our party wants, that the vast majority of trade unions and ordinary people in this country want, or we walk away from it. That's the, that's the decision that's been made. Does it mean I recant on everything I've ever said or done? Absolutely not. I'm sorry about that. What has caused this conversion to the EU cause? You voted against membership of the EEC in 1975. Last year you said you couldn't rule out campaigning to leave the EU. Are you still a Eurosceptic? And if not, what's changed? Well, I did vote that way in 1975, kind of you to remind me. I remember it very well. I remember the debate and the, and the campaign about it. We've had a very big debate within the Labour Party and within the trade unions. Overwhelmingly, the Labour Party and trade unions have come to the view that they want to campaign for a social, just, just Europe, to protect the workers' rights that we've got, 
to extend them and extend that degree of justice. That is the position we've reached. That's the position that has been adopted by the party. That's the party that I lead, and that's the position I'm putting forward. Well, it's a historic day. Britain voted in a referendum to leave the European Union. Parliament voted to trigger Article 50, and the Prime Minister has set out the start of that process today, and we had her statement this afternoon and my response to it. Historic day. Do you feel like it's a sad day? Well, it's a day that we've got to move on from because it's going to happen. We need to ensure that we protect jobs in this country. We need to make sure we've got a good an effective trading relationship with Europe in the future and we need above all immediately to bring certainty to British people living in Europe and European nationals that are living in Britain that uh, their future is secure because after all many thousands of them work in our National Health Service for example and help to keep us well. You want to be Prime Minister making the big calls. Do you honestly believe that Britain is better off outside of the EU? I want us to have a good relationship with the European Union. That's what uh, we have to have in order to maintain jobs in manufacturing, supply chains and food processing. That has to be the priority now. So we have that effective trading relationship, including a customs union with the European Union. I've been told I can only ask you one question, so I would very much like you to answer it. Do you honestly believe that Britain will be better off outside of the EU? We are negotiating a future for Britain in relationship to the EU which maintains that trading relationship. That's what we have to do. You would be the Prime Minister delivering Brexit. Do you in all honesty think that we would be better off outside of the, the EU than in it? The Prime Minister delivering Brexit, if it's us, will be ensuring that Brexit does not damage living standards but gives us opportunities to trade elsewhere also. You had Jeremy Corbyn and some of us who were saying the EU is a cartel of big business. It's a pretty awful set of institutions, but we're better off staying in and fighting to change it from within in association and collaboration with our comrades, progressives across Europe. That's a sophisticated argument. And you are being accused of not being fully behind the bureaucracy of Brussels, of Barnier, of Merkel, of uh, Hollande. Mm. Uh, how do you feel being accused of being sophisticated? It's a, it's a low blow. It really is. It's a low blow. But yeah, I cope. Uh, what we were arguing for was remain and reform. There are very strong social arguments for the EU. Very strong arguments on workers' rights directive, on Charter of Fundamental Rights, on its connection with the European Court of Human Rights, environmental protections, consumer protections. Absolutely very strong arguments for all of that. And I would never want to walk away from those. There are also... Um, criticisms of the EU on its competition policy. I want our mail system to be in public ownership. Uh, there is a competition directive and there's arguments around that. There are arguments around the um, competition element within some EU policies which I think have to be challenged. And so what I was saying was, one is remain in the EU, but we would be a force in the EU for reform of it.